Ever wonder what financial advisors have to say about money goals, the market, or economic issues? If you have, then this podcast is for you. Behind the Designs gives you a sneak peek into the internal conversations at Financial Design Studio. Michelle Smollenberger, a certified financial planner and the CEO here at FDS, will be your host and guide. Welcome to Behind the Designs. Welcome back. This is the last podcast episode of the year, and I just have to say, I love snow. It's snowing as we're recording this, and I guess I'm just kind of a person. I just love to celebrate things, and so we're going to celebrate the year in this episode, but uh, we were just saying, I love snow. It's snowing outside, and you, everybody's different, so I have to be careful when I say I love snow. Do you guys? I mean, I love the snow as long as it's not on the roads. Mm -hmm. So as long as it's nice and cleared, which that is a nice thing that Illinois does a phenomenal job with, Mm -hmm. is making sure the roads get cleared very quickly. Yeah. Uh, But yeah, as long as it's not on the roads, I love it. Yeah. Jake? Hey, everyone. Good to be back on the podcast. I like snow as long as it doesn't go past December. Hmm. So November and December snow I'm fine with, and then I get I'm done with it. After the holidays, it's like, it's a new year. And I know, I'm, I'm kidding. We live in Illinois, uh, for those of you who are new to the show, and it snows usually into May. So you have like two to three days left, and then you're like, yep, it could stop snowing. Exactly. But that's usually when we'll get most of our snow. So you're out of luck. I think I just love snow because... Yeah, it's so pretty and it's fun. There's, it gives it a reason to be cold that there's snow, so it's not just brown. So I think that's why I like it. And yes, I did not say we've got Trevor and Jake here both today. And this is going to be fun. We're really just going to talk about celebrating the year. Uh, we've just calculated something here in our business that was really exciting, just something we wanted to encourage people with. So we really enjoy uh, encouraging people to give to organizations, to others. You're, you're trying to reach your financial goals. And so um, today we're going to be talking about ways to give back, but we're celebrating because we just calculated the amount that our clients, our ongoing clients have given since the beginning of FDS, the beginning of Financial Design Studio. So back to 2017, this is through last year, so 2021, uh, we basically did all this work to kind of say, wait, how much have people given from uh, donor advised funds, through their IRAs, through their tax returns, so we can actually point to these numbers. And that amount was just over $3 million. What? Yeah. It's amazing. Three million ninety eight thousand dollars six hundred and forty seven dollars. Yeah. How Three many cents? million ninety eight thousand six hundred and forty seven dollars. That's incredible. That's really exciting. That's a big number. I think it's exciting. So as we help more families each year, this amount, I mean, Trevor, you've got all the information, but that amount just gets bigger each year that people are giving and sharing with others. Absolutely. Yeah. So uh, this is Trevor here. Um, I'm kind of a data nerd. So I I like to look at not just the, the end result number, but what does this actually look like year over year over year? And kind of as we go back, what I'm looking at here is the difference between 2020 and 2021 Mm -hmm. were roughly the same number of clients that we were tracking. Mm -hmm. This number jumped like 50 to 60%. It's Mm -hmm. incredible. Mm -hmm. So, you know, 2021 alone, Mm -hmm. we were looking at giving over a million dollars. Yeah. So looking at 2022, knowing our clients and what they've been doing Mm -hmm. this year, Mm -hmm. I fully anticipate that this number is going to go even higher still. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. No, I think it's exciting because it's kind of like we love giving. We love giving of our time financially, however we can. And so I think it's exciting just to see. I remember when I was kind of like, hey, this would be a fun idea. We we could like encourage people. So So when you see other people doing something, you know, it encourages you to do something or to think about doing it. And so we were kind of like, hey, let's come up with this. (laughs) And the reason I think you were kind of like, wait, are you serious? Um, It's a lot of time. So Lisa on our team, props to her because we dug through every tax return, transactions we've done for clients. And so to get to this number was a lot of work, um, but really exciting to see. And I think encouraging just to encourage us and everyone to keep, keep giving. Uh, I, I was kind of hesitant to want to say, Hey, let's jump in yeah. right away just because it was going to be a lot of work. Yeah. But now that we've got a good process and, and how we're going to attract this on an ongoing basis. And we all got really excited about mm-hmm. it in terms of, okay, how can we project and see this mm-hmm. into the future? And more importantly, how can we come alongside clients mm-hmm. to really, you know, charitably give to the organizations that they're really interested in giving to so yeah yeah i would just say wow 
thank you to all of those, you know, mm-hmm. for clients out there who are listening. Um, you know, we have some generous clients. That's, yeah. that's really yes. incredible and really amazing. And, uh, you know, if, if you're new to the podcast and you're like just jumping in, uh, I think you may be impressed as well. Um, go listen to some of our other episodes as well. We don't always uh, talk about the charity of our clients, but I do think it's a very important aspect. Um, just think about all the good that's done with those $3 million mm-hmm. and change. Yeah. Uh, it's really incredible. So thanks, everyone. Yeah. yeah. And it's, and it's also too, I think people would be surprised that actually giving is a pretty big goal that people have. So when we talk through what are your goals, what is it you want to accomplish in your life at what different stages, um, giving is a big part of that. People usually want to help others and give back. So, uh, so today that's kind of the, the topic here that we're talking about. We're going to talk about different ways that you can give. And obviously we've just started talking about kind of the financial way that you can give. So let's dig into that a little bit more. We touched on kind of where we hunt for these numbers. But um, Trevor, why don't you kind of lead us off with just talking about some of the popular ways or, you know, pick a couple. What are ways that uh, you really like that people use to give financially? Yeah. So, I mean, the, the, there are lots of ways to go ahead and give. One mm-hmm. of the easiest is, is frankly just to cut a check or just give an organization some cash, mm-hmm. right? So whether that's a church, whether that's through a uh, organization that um, that you really like t- to spend time with, as long as they're a 501c3, mm-hmm. you have an ability to take a tax deduction mm-hmm. for any money that you give to those organizations, yeah. right? So uh, you know, there's a limit, uh, excuse me, there, you, there's a certain amount that you would have to give in order to itemize. Mm-hmm. So we're, again, we're only tracking the, the, right. the numbers for clients that actually itemize. So this number is actually going to be even higher. Mm-hmm. But in terms of how you can give and, and whatnot, you know, cash check, that's frankly the easiest. Mm-hmm. However, there are actually some cool financial planning ways we mm-hmm. can help clients give as well. And mm-hmm. one of my favorite ways to do that is actually utilizing a what's called a donor advised fund. So a DAF sometimes is referred to. And the way that these accounts are set up is you actually open up another account, just like it's a brokerage account. You could do this at Schwab. You could do this at uh, Vanguard. You could do this at uh, Fidelity, mm-hmm. National Christian Foundation. I, mm-hmm. There are lots of different organizations that mm-hmm. have these accounts. Mm-hmm. And the way it works is when you open this account, you can donate directly into this account. Mm-hmm. And whether you donate appreciated stock or you donate cash, you get a tax deduction in the year in which you make the contribution. Mm-hmm. So you're making this contribution, it goes into the account, but that doesn't mean you immediately have to turn around and say, I wanna send this off to organization A, B, or C. Mm-hmm. You can allow those funds to stay there. Mm-hmm. You can invest them if you want. A lot of times we don't always recommend that clients do that just because there's risk associated with that. Mm-hmm. And if clients designate certain dollars mm-hmm. for giving purposes, we wanna make sure that they're able to honor those dollars. Mm -hmm. So once the funds get in there, you're able to kind of make some choices associated with that. You get that tax deduction that year, but then now you're figuring out what's the right schedule to figure out we're going to make these donations for other organizations, Mm -hmm. whether that's a weekly basis, monthly basis, whatever the case may be. And just about any 501c3 is an eligible institution to receive those dollars. Mm -hmm. And it's just an amazing way to, to help give. So yeah. Another thing too, I think that we, you like about this too, is when you give to organizations. So if you're just writing a check or giving cash, you have to keep track of all those receipts with a donor advised fund. You can put all the money in there. Let's say that you know that you're going to give for the year and then you give it from there. So they're keeping track of that. So you could literally just print a statement or a report, right? Exactly. It's basically a one-stop shop. Mm-hmm. And again, because from a tax perspective, the deduction actually comes from when you make the donation to the donor advised fund. Mm-hmm. That's the one statement that you're looking for yeah. right yeah. so it, it's not so much the grants going out to the other organization that's yeah. actually what it, that's actually what it's called when you make a transfer from the donor mm-hmm. advised fund to yeah. the organization it's called a grant mm-hmm. but the contribution into the donor advised fund that's really what we're looking for from a tax perspective mm-hmm. and frankly as as me and my family we we support many different organizations it's just easier to to track mm-hmm. from an accounting perspective when we're filing our taxes each year Yeah. No, that's great. Yeah. I think that's a fun one that people can think of a name that they want to name it. It's Mm -hmm. something their family can get behind. So it's kind of fun just to say, okay, this is going to be something that we do and we use and continue to add to. That's great. All right. What other ways, 
let's see here. Do you have, have we found that people can give? Uh, one I can think of is just qualified charitable distribution. So this is from an IRA. So for example, you're a retiree. You have to take this required minimum distribution every year. But and, and we share this in several videos. You don't have to use that money. You don't have to spend it. But you could actually just give from that directly from your RMD to an organization. When you do that, that portion that you give is not taxable. So you're actually saving taxes and you're giving. So again, we're accomplishing two goals, people that want to give and they're getting um, some tax benefit from that too. Uh, what other ways? Let's see, Jake, anything yeah. else that you can add to that? Anything financially you can think of? Oh, of course. I'll just add one other thing. So I, you know, I, I think in, in, you know, some of uh, you know clients have means you know, you, there's only so many things you can do, you know, with your money. So giving is obviously, a, a, you can spend it, you can save it, or you can give it. Mm -hmm. um, and so, you know, the giving part is big. But I, I think some people get a little intimidated because they're like, mm -hmm. you know, I've got this money and I really want to give it to people maybe. Like say I want to help out a yes. grandchild or a niece or a nephew. But I hear this scary gift tax thing and I don't want to do it. Mm -hmm. Well, the, hey, the, the cool thing is that the IRS will let you give in this year, 2022, up to $16,000 to a person mm -hmm. and you don't have to pay gift tax on that. Mm -hmm. And if you're married, you can double that. You can give 32,000. Mm -hmm. So that's another, and that's actually going up to 17,000 next year. So, mm -hmm. uh, that's just a way that you, you know, you can give to as many different, you know, people as you want organizations mm -hmm. and give that money and don't have to worry about that pesky gift tax, uh, which we won't get into today. Maybe, uh, maybe that'll be a future episode, but, right. uh, it can be, be cumbersome for those folks. So yeah, yeah. keep Th giving. And that's really helpful because I think what we're touching on, like the way that we got to this number was how much people have given that they can deduct. And so we mentioned that people are giving a lot. Oh, yeah. I mean, just to individuals that mm -hmm. we're giving to that we can't deduct. So we don't get a benefit from it. So we're maybe not tracking it. But those are things where that's also really meaningful. And so just to be careful, like you, you can't necessarily deduct all of that giving. If you give it to a person, right. it needs to go to a 501c3. Those donations are deductible. But I think you make a really great point that um, we're not just wanting to help to get to help ourselves to get a benefit we're giving these people are giving and that money is going to those organizations and that year it's not just stocking you know stocking money up um, they may be putting it in there for like the next year the next two years mm -hmm. to get the tax benefit but then it's going to those organizations so yeah that's really helpful yeah and, and that's actually one of the interesting things that I've learned is even talking through with clients sometimes where hey we can organize and structure things in certain ways so you can optimize a tax deduction mm -hmm. Right. But yeah. frankly, it becomes more important for them to say, I don't care about the yeah. tax deduction. Yes. This is mostly dollars mm -hmm. that I really want to help people with. Mm -hmm. So I don't care about the tax deduction. Let me just help the most amount of people. And we mm -hmm. love to get behind it. Mm -hmm. Right. So we always want to figure out what's the right financial answer. But frankly, the right financial answer isn't always the best family answer. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I think something that's interesting is, so we're going to kind of switch here from talking about like giving financially, but giving of time is, um, is that sometimes you give, so sometimes when you're younger, you give of your time mm -hmm. because you may not have a lot of money. And, but then later in life, when you do have the, the financial means that you can give, you might be giving to those organizations that you gave a lot of your time to. And so like, People give because they're attached or there's some type of meaning to the organizations that they're giving to. And whether that was a personal experience, maybe something you experienced and you needed services from, or something in your local area that you love to support and it's in your community. Um, this is where it's like financially, but also giving of your time is really important. So let's kind of shift into that, I guess, giving of our time. We also hear from a lot of people who say, well, I can't retire yet. I don't know what I'm going to do. Well, this is, this hopefully <laughs> will give you lots of ideas, but there's so many ways that we can be giving of our time. Uh, Jake, why don't you start us off with just some ideas here or thoughts? Yeah, sure. So I'll share a story. Um, and, and hi, mom and dad, if you're listening. Um, but my parents, so they, they're recently retired within the last couple of years. And again, like you were saying, Michelle, it's like, all right, we have endless hours in the day. What are we going to do with it? You know, there's certain things that, you know, they can spend time on in terms of hobbies and other things, mm -hmm. but they've each kind of taken something that they're interested in and passionate about and turned it into a way to give time and to help others. So my dad uh, spent many years doing uh, construction, building homes, doing remodels. So he spends time now in the springs and summers and fall with Habitat for Humanity mm -hmm. out in Washington state. So he's helping an organization, um, you know, build homes for other people. And so, you know, he's good at it. Uh, it's a, it's right in his wheelhouse. He's still young enough to get up on a ladder and uh, and, and pound some nails. Mm -hmm. So he's digging that. 
And then my mom and my and their dog, I should say. So she's involved with a, a charitable organization called Love on a Leash. <laughs> and so the dog had to go through some training. Gilly, she's a great, great dog. Uh, and so what they do a couple times a week is they'll go around to different uh, nursing homes in the area. Because, you know... How great is it just to have a dog, just a pet, mm-hmm. or to sit next to? Mm-hmm. And so, so my mom and Gilly go around to nursing homes. Sometimes they'll go to schools, you know, to kids, mm-hmm. um, you know, especially some more at-risk schools uh, where kids are struggling a little bit. Um, but you know, they can't help but smile when they see a, a cute mm-hmm. dog come in. Mm-hmm. And uh, and so yeah, so thanks a lot uh, to to Rob and Lori out there for doing that. Mm-hmm. And then what I found, uh, I got involved with an organization here called it's a national organization, but Big Brothers and Big Sisters. I'm mm-hmm. sure many people have heard of it. Yep. Uh, so I, I work with the Chicago chapter, and uh, uh, yeah, I've been working with a, a little brother through that program for the last few years, mm-hmm. and it's and it's super fun. You know, it's just uh, a way with which the, you know to connect with somebody just to, to get to know him as a person, and you know hopefully help you know in in some way or another uh, help answer any questions that they have and just give them a different, a different lens with which to view the world. So mm-hmm. yeah. yeah, I found, I found all, all those are, are very positive. I love all of those. And I think what I like about it is you touched on something really important is that we all have something that we can give knowledge, experience. So this experience and, you know, your dad using something that he's learned that he can give back to help others because there's a lot of people that wouldn't have the first clue of how to do anything on their house. And so, mm-hmm. yeah, I think that's really, really meaningful. Plus they're, yeah, you're, they're using their skills. And I think it's just like, it's kind of gratifying, but you also realize like at the end of the day, we can't take our money with us. Yeah. And so um, whether we're giving financially of our time is fulfilling. And we also, it just opens our eyes to realize there's so many people in need and so when we're giving back and we're helping and like you said like people can't help but smile you know when you see a dog and when you see like people can't help but smile but sometimes it is just like so meaningful because they may not have a home I mean this is a home yeah. that they're getting this is like these are really big things to people and so I think it's so cool that we all get to be a part of other people's lives in this way yeah I was just going to say another thing that uh, as Jake you're kind of sharing you know uh, uh, helping support and connecting through big brothers big sisters another thing I always think about is a lot of times people can go into giving mm-hmm. and say hey I'm going to step into this situation I'm going to give my time my my life experience and mm-hmm. you know connect with younger people mm-hmm. right mm-hmm. and What's interesting to me is uh, I, I went through a similar situation with our, our church's youth group and stepping into that. And mm-hmm. one of the, the, the situations that I remember was I walked in. I'm like, hey, I'm going to do this. I'm going to help help these kids mm-hmm. as, as much as I can. Mm-hmm. And what I found was you know, after the first couple of weeks when you start second guessing whether you should be doing this at all because <laughs> you don't right. know what you're actually doing mm-hmm. very correctly. But uh, after you start building some of these relationships with students, I actually found that it wasn't so much of me pouring out mm-hmm. into them as it was, I learned so much Mm -hmm. about, or so much from them about myself, about how to be a better father, Mm -hmm. how to be a better husband in certain Mm ways. Um, It it just, there's really cool ways that Mm -hmm. you can learn from other people, even though like the world might say, hey, I have more experience than than Mm -hmm. someone else. We can always be learning. So Mm -hmm. there's there's a true beauty in giving because Mm -hmm. oftentimes when we give of ourselves, whether it's financially or our time or whatever, Mm -hmm. we actually just our recipients in the end. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. I completely agree. Yeah. I think we, uh, we kind of, sometimes we learn, I remember doing something similar like youth group. And then I was, had this group of girls and they moved into high school. And so just following them through that whole period. So a couple things is just like showing up. So yeah. just showing up for other people, your presence. And when you take action for someone is so meaningful. So I think just like being there, we don't realize the importance of that yeah. and the impact on someone's life, especially when they're younger, that they see that someone's there for for them other than, you know, like your parents who you feel like have to be there for you, you know, like family. Yep. They're always going to be there for better or worse, but it's really meaningful when someone says, I want to be here for you and they show up. And, um, I just remember kind of being like, uh, you know, not feeling qualified. It's like, you don't go through, go through all this training, especially if you're not a parent yet. And, I just remember, oh, like there was that one point, I just have to act like them. I just need to act like a junior hire. And honestly, because there's like so many different contests or games, and when you just act and just have fun like on their level and show up, I just think it's so meaningful. So it's kind of getting over this, who I am. I don't have to be someone. I don't have to pretend to be someone that I'm not. They just want me to be here. And and then also I think it helps us just reprioritize what's important in our lives. We can get very stuck into this is my day, this is my 
work schedule and I come home and I'm exhausted. But when we kind of step out of that, we realize, wait, there's th- other things that are more important. And so, yes, I go do my best at the job that I do. I love what I do, but there are, there are things that are, you know, can also be really important too. So yeah, absolutely. What's that priority? I've never seen you exhausted, Michelle. No, ever? <laughs> no, you're always brimming with energy. Mm, I, I'm a pretty optimistic, upbeat person, but yes, there's are. days. Um, so, okay, talk us through any other, I guess, creative things that you guys can think of. We've talked about kind of financially, time. Um, now we could kind of even talk about like favorite ways that we reflect on like what we've done in a year or um, the, the way the, what we've accomplished, like we just have, but also like kind of a plan for next year. So maybe you haven't accomplished everything you wanted to and you're looking into next year saying, you know what, this year I really want to make it a point to do this. Um, what are some ways that you guys have to think? think about that. Yeah. I mean, as, as we're stepping into a new year here, Mm -hmm. right. This is a really common time when people want to set new year's resolutions, say, Mm -hmm. I'm going to be a new person. Mm -hmm. I'm going to start doing these activities, whatever, Mm -hmm. whatever they may be. And I'm going to stick by them and I'm going to start the next year fresh. Yeah. Right. And that's a really common, awesome thing to do. One thing I would actually encourage there in terms of as we're reflecting and setting some of these goals though, is Mm -hmm. Uh, not so much focus on the results as it is the behavior. Yeah. Uh, because I know I get stuck. I want to get X, Y, and Z done. Mm-hmm. But in mm-hmm. reality, in order to get X, Y, and Z done, I need to get really comfortable and consistent with doing A, B, and C mm-hmm. in order to get to X, Y, Z. Right? Yeah. So as I'm reflecting and thinking through that, I need to personally work on shifting my lens from, hey, I'm not trying to accomplish this. I'm actually trying to get better about doing mm-hmm. A, B, and C, getting the behaviors done. Mm-hmm. On, on a daily basis. And uh, for me, the, you know, there's always going to be a physical aspect, mm-hmm. right, of, hey, as my body is getting older, I recognize mm-hmm. that I'm not, you know, 25 years old anymore. Yeah. I don't have the same kind of energy that I used to. Mm-hmm. So I need to be more intentional with that. But it's mm-hmm. not a goal of, hey, I want to get to a target weight or mm-hmm. I want to eat healthier or this and that. I want to, you know, make individual choices mm-hmm. for what I'm actually going to live mm-hmm. like yeah. throughout the next year. Exactly. I like how you said that. I think we might even like coin a new phrase here. It's kind of like same person, um, just new intentions. Like maybe it's something like that where, because I think, yeah, that's something I think when we hear that new phrase, that new year, new you, it's not that like, I think we sometimes cringe because we're like, no, it's still me, but I have new intentions or just things that I've intended to do that I want to follow through on. So, so yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I like the way you put that, Trevor. Be- focus on the behavior versus the result. I think that's uh, that's really that's really mm-hmm. key. So you know, kind of one thing when, that I like to do, and you know, that you could do this any time of the year. It doesn't have to be. It's just you know, when the when the calendar changes, you know, maybe we we have some time to slow down a little bit. I think it's common that we reflect. So I would say, you know, look in the rearview mirror uh, before you plan uh, for the next year and celebrate what you did. Yeah. Like just kind of go through, maybe it's, you know, New Year's Eve or New Year's Day, you know, sit with your family, kind of review your calendar. Like look at all the things that we did this year. Yeah. Um, you know, if you're, if you're like me and you, and, and you, those of you who listened to episode six, you already heard this, uh, love updating that net worth statement <laughs> beginning of the year. Let's update the numbers. I can't wait. Uh, and then, and see how we did. Unfortunately, maybe it went down this year, uh, given market conditions, but I'm optimistic, you know, we saved a bit too. So mm-hmm. I think that's a, a great way to kind of look look and and we've been doing this for a while my wife Katie and I and so we look back and it's just so cool to see the progress over time mm-hmm. no matter where 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 you start uh you know it doesn't matter yep. but i think that's just a great way and then and then like trevor said all right what do we what are those bit you know what what are those one or two things this year that are really important to us that we want to do whether that's a financial you know goal of saving x amount of dollars um you know putting something away for something very exciting mm-hmm. uh you know is there a vacation that we're really jazzed about that we want to you know start looking forward to mm-hmm. i think Putting just something on the calendar, uh, even if you don't have it dialed in, you know, whether it's, it's, you know, something, you know, financial, physical, uh, you know, emotional, put that out there. It'll give you something to look forward to. And then you can start working backwards to today and start making those incremental steps towards accomplishing that. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, that's helpful. I think uh, something that's interesting we kind of hear from people over time, I think the number one time that people think about their money is tax season mm-hmm. because they have to pay taxes or see if they're going to owe, owe any more, if they're going to get money back. I feel like that's the number one time that people think about their money. And then the second time is year end here. So it's Christmas. What am I giving? I have to buy gifts. And so I'm spending and it's kind of leading into money, uh, um, leading into tax season. So it's kind of interesting. Like these are like the two times that we see yeah. that people are thinking about their finances. Yeah, those January credit card bills are never fun. Mm-hmm, right? <laughs> uh, that's the thing. Yeah, it's like they kind of like piggybacks into... Yeah. It's like it was so yeah. much fun giving. Oh, wait, I got to pay for this stuff now. <laughs> Exactly. And then taxes. And I think, uh, I think it's yeah. like this is where stress can come in. And so we're saying let's have a plan. Let's celebrate what we've done. Have a plan as we move into the new year. I, I think that is really key in, in, in celebration, mm-hmm, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, for me, I know I am incredibly critical of myself, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Uh, of, of so many things of my life. I say, mm-hmm. okay, I need to do better. This, this, and this, this. And I think there's real importance in making sure that we say, Hey, we did a great job with this. Mm-hmm. Right. And, yeah. and it, it didn't have to turn out exactly right. Mm-hmm. You know, we didn't have to ex- you know, execute and get to the exact right net worth that we were looking for, but we did the right things in terms of, you know, Jake, like you're saying, you know, saving money. And mm-hmm. we did the right things of being more intentional with our time and supporting the right organizations that we were looking mm-hmm. for. Right. Yep. But let's celebrate that instead of, you know, take my approach and be critical all the time. So yeah. I'm actually, as we're speaking right now, I'm, I'm feeling convicted uh, mm. myself right now to be mm. much more optimistic and uh, celebratory mm. in, into mm-hmm. the future. So. Yeah, you yeah. said it. You focus on that behavior. Yeah. You know, the, the results will come, um, but focus on those behaviors. Um, I had a thought, but I lost it. Go ahead, Michelle. Yeah, I was going to, I was going to kind of give uh, an idea that uh, our family, Steve's family actually does at Christmas. So if you find yourself as someone, maybe you like to give and you have young families, family members, um, or just like, uh, your kids now have kids and you're trying to think of how can I encourage them to just be thoughtful of what they give or, um, to others. Uh, there's a story and we'll put it in the show notes online that, um, it talks about this dad who, you know, you get all the gifts in the world and so you don't need anything else. And so he just wanted for his gift for them to give something to someone else. And so that's this like really cute story. So you put, you put this story like in an envelope on the tree and uh, they do this and say, can I put like just an amount of money for each of the kids? So our families each like need to basically spend like X amount of money that year giving it to someone else. So you can choose the organization or whatever. And then the next year at Christmas, you put the envelope back on the tree saying, here's who we gave it Mm -hmm. to. And I always, yeah, I'm just like, oh, that's so fun. And uh, I always try to think like each year because I think... um, you know the organizations you give to, and um, there's so many groups out there. There's so many people that are helping others, but it's cool when you can make other people aware of other things that they might enjoy giving to, too. So we always try to, like, think of a new, like, way to give, a new organization so that, you know, we're, like, expanding who is, it's not always the same people, but I just love that because we put it on the tree, and I try to put, like, pictures of us doing the thing, you know, together, or it's kind of like a story of, well, here's how we got involved, or here's who... So um, that's just a fun way. If you're kind of like, how do I encourage others to do it? Mm-hmm. That may be something where you're like, here, here's some money. Give, you know, you give it this year how you want and let us know next year how it went. So I think that's kind of fun. So that's an idea if, you know, anyone's looking. That's a great idea. For help. So, yeah. And I think the beauty with that too is since you have so many people doing it, mm-hmm. right, you have lots of different organizations that are all going to benefit. Exactly. Right? Because we're all built differently. We all have different passions and, mm-hmm. you know, strong suits of say, hey, this is really important to mm-hmm. me. Mm-hmm. So I think that's beautiful because so many mm-hmm. organizations get to benefit and it's not just one. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. I think there's so many groups that we all are a part of. And especially I think this year, just with inflation, with what the mm-hmm. economy is going through, there's so many organizations that, you know, a dollar doesn't stretch as far. So I think just being thoughtful of that, that's, you know, that's one encouragement that I do know there's so many organizations that need help. So if you find yourself as someone who's like, oh, I haven't finished for the year, like, please be encouraged to actually do that. Cause I do know, um, or organizations need those funds, mm-hmm. especially this year. Yeah. Um, 
But likewise, if you find yourself as someone who needs something from an organization, these all of these groups that we've talked about, I think one of the things that I've realized is just be sure that you're asking for help. There are so many organizations where people give extra so that, you know, another kid can come to camp who can't afford it or, um, you know, like someone coming and bringing their dog or a home like Habitat for Humanity. So please, I mean, if we yeah. can help coordinate and get you help, uh, please be sure and just ask or point people in the right direction direction because we know that um, they're there to help you. So uh, any final thoughts that you guys have? I think this has been really helpful just to kind of even give people ideas of how they can get involved. Yeah, thanks for having us on the show today, Michelle. Always great to sit down uh, in front of the mics um, with you and Anna. So we appreciate it. And yeah, I think, um, you know, be intentional, celebrate. And then I'm a big fan, write down those goals for the year, no matter what they are. Mm -hmm. Put them, tell somebody, write them down. It'll really help hold yourself accountable for that. Mm -hmm. But and just thanks to everybody, uh, all the giving that's that's gone on and we'll continue to do. Awesome. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Thank you for uh, for having me on. It's uh, it, yeah. it's nice to actually be here every now and again. And uh, yeah, like Jake said, I, I think intentionality is going to be really important, right? So mm -hmm. be intentional with you know just taking one little step. Yeah, and we'll keep you updated each year as we go because this is exciting for us to continue to build on. So we're celebrating with you. We hope that you enjoy this end of the year, and we'll see you in the new year. Um, please feel free if you have questions or topics you want us to cover. Um, you can actually send those to uh, the email address podcast at financialdesignstudio.com. So if you have any questions, please feel free to forward those to us. And again, we'll see you in the new year on the next episode. Thanks for tuning in. If you like what you hear in our podcast, please subscribe. We release new episodes every other week. And quick note, the content discussed on this podcast should not be taken as financial advice. Financial Design Studio accepts no responsibility for your individual actions or choices. But for more information about Financial Design Studio and who we are, check out our website, financialdesignstudio.com. We'll see you in the next episode.